Hello, my name is Roman, and I'm a customer success manager at Taloka. We help companies and teams label their data efficiently using a crowdsourcing approach. Clear instructions improve the quality of results. The key here is to break the complicated process down into a series of simple steps, each described in the instructions. Decompositions makes it easier to write instructions with a clear structure and comprehensive text. So, when writing instructions, consider the following. Instructions are a crucial part of onboarding new performers. The faster a performer figures out what is expected from them, the better it is for everyone. Performers spend less effort on the tasks and you get more performers. Instructions are also helpful for performers who are already involved in the project. If a performer needs more information about something, they can find it in the instructions. Here is the structure that we follow and recommend. First, state the purpose of your task. What exactly should the performer do? How will the results be applied? What product will they be used in? What does the product have to offer? Taking traffic lights in a photo may seem pointless and boring, but training a neural network to operate self-driving cars sounds like a more useful and engaging task. Knowing the purpose makes performers more responsible and loyal to your task. Besides, understanding the purpose of data collection or labeling helps people make decisions in tough situations. Second, we recommend describing how the performer can access the project in detail. Is there a training or exam section? What is the pass grade? Is there re-examination for performers who failed their first attempt? It also helps to add payment information, especially for complex tasks and tasks with additional bonuses. Performers are more comfortable starting projects with clearly defined conditions. Third, provide all the necessary technical details. Should the task be completed from a smartphone? Does it require additional browser settings? Provide a short and comprehensive manual. Remember, it will also be read by newcomers. Fourth, add a short description of your task interface or better yet, a screenshot with comments about individual elements and buttons. If the task interface is simple enough, you can skip this part. Finally, there is the task itself. Go through all the most common scenarios that performers will come across step by step. Also explain what to do in cases that don't fit these scenarios. Be sure to add some examples. Theory is important, but seeing real life cases is much more helpful. Next, add all the necessary reference materials such as glossaries and FAQs. In the end, describe what to do if the performer has any questions about the task or project in general. Seems like a lot, doesn't it? Well, we're not quite done yet. Once you have finished, review the result. Here's what we recommend checking for. Your instructions shouldn't take up more than two screens. A person's short-term memory can only retain about seven elements at a time. Instructions that are too long or have a lot of subheadings may be too complex. If this is the case, consider splitting the project up into several smaller ones. Avoid using more than three levels of headings. The more levels instructions have, the harder it is to remember the beginning. As for you, this is a sign that your instructions are too long. Try to keep your structure uniform. If you use, say, three subheadings in the iOS section, use the same ones in the Android section. Also, think about the ways performers will use these instructions. If it is an outdoor task, people will read them outside on a smartphone. Make them easier. Place more sections under the cart, leaving only essential information for quick access. Also, make sure that all the images and screenshots feed the screen. You know how your structure? Excellent. Let's think about how to fill in this structure to make the instructions useful for performers. To start with, there is no universal recipe for creating great guidelines. 
every project has its own needs. However, I do have some general advice. Keep in mind that the crowd consists of people with very different experiences and background. Some of them know nothing about the fields you work in, let alone your project. So the first thing to consider is the language you use in the instructions. Get rid of all the professional jargon. You might not even realize you're using it. Try giving your text to someone outside of your profession. They can check it out if it contains any confusing words or expressions. Be just as careful with special terminology and avoid it whenever possible. If you have to use special terms, explain them before using them in the text. If you introduce a term, use it consistently throughout the text and don't replace it with synonyms. Another thing to pay attention to is the style and syntax of the text. Be brief. The golden rule here is one thought, one sentence, one topic, one paragraph. Use lists and tables to structure information. If you have multiple points to make, create a list. If the list have a system of related parts, put it into a table. Be careful with text formatting. Consistent rules can make the text easier to read. Avoid using too many format styles and colors because this can make it confusing. The same applies to illustrations. Pictures are generally helpful, but too many can distract the reader. Use images only when necessary. I know I've talked a lot about how the text should look, and you're probably thinking, what about the content? The content of your instructions depends entirely on the nature of the task. We can offer one important tip about how to make the instructions as complete as possible. Once you have written the text, Take a couple of dozens of tasks and try to do them yourself with the help of your own instruction, of course. Or give it to a colleague from another project or family member. Do they understand what you wanted to say? This exercise will quickly show you which cases you overlooked in the description and which ones need more detail. It will also help you add some real-life examples to the instruction, which is also very important. In this video, we covered the text of the instructions. Good instructions consist of a statement of purpose, an onboarding description, technical details, a description of the interface, step-by-step -step instructions on how to complete the task, references, and feedback information. The language should be as simple as possible. Visual formatting is helpful as long as it doesn't use too many colors or symbols. In the next video, we will talk about a user-friendly task interface that will complement your instruction.